Thanks for joining us here for another video from Howard Piano Industries. I'm Steve Howard and I'm here to show you today um, what uh, tools I carry with me when I go to tune pianos um, because uh, just having t piano tuning tools isn't always uh, sufficient. Um, I often get asked from our customers online um, you know, what, uh, what are the most essential tools for carrying with you when you go to uh, work on pianos. Um, so I'm going to go through today, you know, not only showing you what uh, the few piano tool tuning tools that I have, but also what other uh, supplies and tools that I carry with me so that uh, I'm ready for some of the most common um, common repairs and adjustments that need to be made on pianos as you come across them in tuning. Obviously, you can't uh, carry every single thing that uh, you may need to do a repair. For one thing, oftentimes you don't have time in your schedule to do uh, some of the more extensive repairs, and some things aren't uh, as common to come up, so you don't necessarily prepare for every single thing. But you prepare for some of the more common things, such as um, a broken string, maybe a broken hammer shank, um, you know, maybe a key bushing that came out uh, or something like that. So we'll go through all the different um, the different tools that uh, they carry with to, that are just in case things um, and uh, what uh, what that entails. Here in front of you, we've got uh, my my main toolkit, and this is the this is the toolkit that I carry in with me every time I go to a tune a piano. I've got another bag that has a bunch of other stuff that um, I keep in the in my car. Um, uh, and I can, I, can, I can run out and get if I need, but I uh, don't really use it very often, so I don't carry it into each each uh, place that I go to work. Um, but um, I'm going to go through some of the stuff that I keep in here. Um, of course, I've got my tuning hammer. Um, I keep a screwdriver. This is the one I used for inserting the temperament strip. And, of course, here we've got a couple of uh, temperament strips, so I keep those. Um, use a couple of wedge mutes. Uh, those are basically, the, for the most part, those are the tuning tools that I use for tuning uh, most every piano. So uh, I don't use a lot of different types of mutes, even though there's some available, but you may want to if you uh, like using different types of mutes, um, carry some of those. I also have this uh, lid prop block. Um, pretty much any time I tune a vertical piano, I use this. This uh, is used to hold the lid up. Um, very helpful so that uh, you don't have to rest the top of the lid back against the wall. I keep a utility knife here to, um, you know, if I'm cutting felt or something like that, or I have to trim off some wood from a shank or something that uh, use that. Um, I keep this with me in my main tool cases as a single needle voicing tool. Uh, because if I have to, if I'm tuning a grand piano and I just want to do some some uh, some light voicing on a on a piano that's got some some bright overtones, um, I can use that without having all my voicing tools with me. Uh, some of the other items here I've got in my main tool case, I, I use the hot stuff CA glue if I come across a. Um, a loose tuning pin and it can just and it's just a single one oftentimes I'll put some CA glue in there to um, to make that so that it can be tuned um, I've got uh, my Protec CLP which is a often used item and of course my hypo oiler for applying the Protec CLP I've got uh, some wood glue uh, which comes in handy um, you know if you've got uh, uh, jacks, jack flange that came unglued, or you know some kind of thing that you need uh, hammer sh that's good for gluing hammer shanks onto. Also, um, this tool here is a spring hook tool. It's a regulating tool for grand pianos, um, so I keep that with me in case I need to adjust the the repetition springs on a on a, on a grand piano. Uh, over here, I've got uh, my micrometer. Uh, if I have to measure center pins or tuning pins or anything like that, I've got my micrometer handy. Um, and then, because my tool case is small, I don't have a whole bunch of different screwdrivers, but I do have one um, screwdriver handle which holds um, several different. I've got a wider tip, um, and then up here from here I've got a, a Phillips head uh, tip. So that kind of serves the purpose of several different screwdrivers. There are um, screwdrivers you can get for the for the combination tool handle, which is used for some of the regulating tools, um, but I just happen to use, use this one that I got from my local hardware store for the screwdrivers. I also have a small adjustable wrench 
um, for because uh, it's not uncommon to have to tighten the the bench bolts um, because they've come become come loose. I also have a uh, little small capstan screwdriver, so we've got that. Um, so that's in that compartment. And of course, I showed you the combination tool handle that's uh, used for some of these other tools that I'll show you here in a minute. Um, then I've got my uh, tool palette here. I've got um, my extendable magnetic pickup tool. This is a uh, this is a real saver if you drop a flange screw down inside the action or any kind of metal object. If you if it's maybe somebody else dropped something down inside the action and you have to get it out rather than have to take the whole action out. Uh, it's real handy if you can just pull that out, stick it down inside the action, and um, and uh, retrieve it that way. It's real real handy. So that's been a lifesaver in many cases. Um, you'll use a little flashlight. Uh, this is a nice to have if, if you're working in the action and you have to be able to see a screw or whatever it is you're doing. I have my, um, this is the hammer voicing tool for the tool handle. This is nice to have because it's nice and compact and it's already, and it can be used for the, um, the combination tool handle that I already have in my in my bag. Uh, this is my Grand Action screwdriver, which is often used for the small little screws on a Grand Action, and there might be one or two even on occasionally on vertical actions I use that on. Uh, this is the Grand Drop screwdriver, uh, which is used for um, Grand Drop screws. You use it for some of the smaller spade head uh, regulating screws. Uh, some of the other uh, screws that are on a grand piano action. Um, got a pair of little pair of scissors if I'm putting using felt or anything like that. Uh, that those are handy to have. I've got a. Uh, this is a screwdriver. Uh, I use this one specifically because it's the only one that fits when I'm doing like, for example, a. Um, uh, a studio piano that's got that doesn't have hinges for the for the top lid, but it might have just bolts with brackets on the back. Um, you sometimes find those on. Um, can't think of the think of the brand, but there's certain there's one certain brand that uh, has those. They're they're mostly made in, made for school pianos and so forth. Um, so um, I use some tweezers. I don't use these very often, but I've got them if I need them. Uh, very often needed tool is the stainless steel rule. If you're making regulation measurements, um, good to have. Um, this is my offset key spacer, which I keep and uh, use occasionally. If I've got uh, a um, keys that are rubbing, you know, I can use that to space correctly space the keys. I've got some uh, needle nose pliers. These are nice and little compact so that uh, they fit well in my tool case. And then I've got a few different um, regulating tools here that I use. This is the pointed capstan screwdriver or screw wrench. And, um, and I've got my damp offset damper regulator. Uh, this is uh, action flange screwdriver. It's a good, uh, good one for taking out action uh, flange screws. Um, my seven inch uh, let off screwdriver or screw regulator um, so that's for the for the standard upright uh, regulating screws and then my back check and bridle wire regulators so those are um, those are my regulating tools that I use quite often if I'm making small adjustments there are other regulating tools too but those are the ones used for the most common tasks so um, so that and then and then just inside here of uh, the, uh, this pocket here I put my iPad for that which has my tuning software on it I keep uh, some business cards a pen and my of course my um, invoices here so that I can give customers a receipt. So that that's the tool case that I carry with me on a regular basis. Uh, next we're going to come over here to another pile of tools that I uh, keep in a separate bag. Like I mentioned, um, uh, I keep a separate bag in the car that I don't carry with me into every single tuning, but uh, it's good to have have those have some things there that that we can uh, that you can grab and use in the, for those occasional repairs so you don't have to make another trip back if it's something you have time in your schedule for. Um, I've got this little 
uh, box here that has a few odds and ends. Bridle straps are always handy to have if you got a uh, broken bridle strap. These ones, uh, I use the clip-on ones for a, for a single repair usually because uh, they're easy to clip on. So those are clip-on bridle straps. I just keep a few of those. I've got a few um, key dip blocks in here. I don't use those very often unless I'm doing some regulating work. But uh, these are... Um, Voicing needles, so I keep some extra voicing needles uh, on hand if I break one on my voicing tool. I keep a few different um, types of um, desk knobs, okay, because uh, oftentimes you'll come across a piano that um, the desk knobs have come off or, or lost or whatever, and, and uh, the customer really appreciates if um, if you can have those and, you know, you can have those and uh, sell them to the customer for a little bit of markup there. I've got some um, hammer shank repair sleeves if I'm doing a hammer shank uh, repair, and I'll show you in a moment the other tools that I use for that. Um, but we've got those. Um, I've got uh, wire bending pliers, um, which are good for making adjustments on, um, like, for example, grand, um, grand damper wires. Here I've got some uh, uh, voicing tools. Uh, I've got my grand voicing block here hammer sandpaper file. I've got a strip of, uh, of fine sandpaper here for uh, for filing, filing hammers. Um, and of course we've got some PVC glue which is often used along with some some uh, PTFE powder or Teflon powder. Um, another lubricant here. We've got some Pro Lube which is, is handy, to, handy to have from time to time. Um, I've got some hammer shanks which, uh, like I mentioned, you might come across. I've got the spinet and the upright hammer shanks. I obviously don't carry the grand hammer shanks because there's so many different types. It'd um, be difficult to, to have one for all the different types of grand pianos. You could carry um, some of the more common ones like Yamaha and Steinway and so forth uh, with you. If, you know, if that, that could be something that you'd carry with you. Now, for doing hammer shank repairs, I have my um, uh, hammer head and butt extractor um, tool here that we that I've used on several occasions if you've got a broken hammer shank uh, and you got to drill out the um, drill out the, the shank from the from the hammer head or the butt that's a good tool to have um, then a couple of the other repairs that uh, you could come across are you know oftentimes if you've got uh, uh, you know a couple tight um, flanges you're going to have to do some repinning and that can be done fairly quickly if you've only got one or two so I've got my repinning tools here's my box of um, center pins with all the different sizes of center pins and of course I showed you the micrometer before which is uh, essential in that my center pin nippers here uh, my center pin repinning tool and of course my flange bushing brooch kit, which all the different with all the different sizes of uh, flange bushing brooches so those are um, that's uh, those are the tools pretty much that you need for um, for doing flange flange rebushing um, if you're going to do uh, or not flange rebushing but uh, easing out the the tight flanges um, I also keep some um, uh, key bushing cloth key bushing cloth and you know, like I said uh, key bushing might have come out or it might be too tight and you need to replace it or whatever so the PVC glue in this and then I keep a couple of the um, key bushing calls with me too. Um, I usually keep several different sizes um, so uh, I keep several different si uh, thicknesses of various types of felt uh, those come in handy in, in a number of different uh, situations um, and then um, the other thing is um, key uh, key repair. Sometimes uh, maybe a key key top came off, which isn't uncommon for for you to come across. So uh, I don't have the key tops here in front of me, but uh, if you know if you keep a few spare key tops, um, you know of the different for for the different notes, like an octave, um, one for each of the notes in the in the octave, and um, you, know, you could use the white ones with the fronts are usually good, or you can. Use the um, the simulated ivory, which are good if, if somebody's got some ivories missing. Uh, you could use uh, ivory key top heads, which I usually have those. I don't have them out here, but um, I've got them, got them in my bag. Ivory key top heads are nice because 
often you'll come across a piano that has um, some ivory key tops missing, so you can put those on. So these these are the clamps uh, for gluing those on, um, and uh, so well if, if that's the case, what I'll usually do is uh, glue it on before I tune the piano, uh, clamp it, you know, take the key out and so forth. And then uh, by the time I'm done tuning, the glue is dry enough that I can take the clamp off. So, uh, so those are those are for that. Um, now the other um, the other thing that I keep uh, is another another case, and I'm going to pull it over here. This is my um, stringing case, okay? Because uh, it's not uncommon to well uh, breaking a string can happen. Okay, and usually you want to if uh, usually you get that uh, replaced right away. If, um, so having the tools and some spare spare strings um, on hand will certainly um, save you and that save you a trip back. So here I keep a separate case. You know I probably keep a little more than I need to, but uh, just as handy to keep everything in one one toolbox. Of course I got my gloves so that uh, I don't. Um, Sweat on the strings. This is a bass string twisting tool that I've got. Uh, I got my stringing crank. Um, these are parallel pliers um, that are good to have. Uh, this is what I use if I have to um, just a clamp for clamping the, the string to hold it onto the hitch pin um, while I'm hooking the hooking the string onto the tuning pins. Uh, here I've got my string coil lifter and string spacer. Um, got my ratchet star head with a with the ratchet on it. Um, so that's uh, that's used often. You can use a tuning hammer but I just find it to be nice to have the this is my agraph remover. Don't use that real often in the field but it's there. Um, and then of course a tuning pin punch. You want to make sure you have a tuning pin punch um, in case you need to drive the pin little further into the block. And this is nice too if you've got some loose tuning pins and you don't have the CA glue or you don't want to use the CA glue you can drive if there's room between the bottom of the tuning pin, tuning pin coil and the plate you can drive the tuning pins a little bit further in and um, oftentimes that will help in um, uh, making you know tightening up the tuning pin. Uh, I've got a stringing hook here and um, of course my Handheld, handheld coil maker. Okay, so those are th those are the tools that I've got. I do have a um, uh, this one's kind of weren't beat up, but um, this is my power tuning pin socket. I don't usually use this in the field because I don't usually have a power drill with me, but um, I've it's in here because I used it to replace a set of bass strings. Um, one, one time here. So, uh, and then underneath, of course, we're going to keep. Um, I use a little mallet for uh, for driving the tuning pins. Um, uh, I keep a, a couple different sizes of spare tuning pins, and of course the wire. Okay, we've got a, um, a wire assortment that includes um, you know 13 different sizes of which are the most common sizes for pianos. So I keep um, keep at least one of every size. In, in my case so that I've got um, the size of wire that I need for a replacement in case uh, in case a wire breaks. So those are that's what I have for my um, tools that I carry with me. Obviously uh, you know if you talk to other technicians um, they you know you'll hear you'll get a different set of you know a different list of um, tools and parts to carry with but uh, you know I find these to be the most helpful and, I, and again obviously you're not going to have um, you know supplies for every single thing that you might come across but at least this covers um, you know the most most common things that you're going to come across and all these tools at least most of these tools and, and parts and supplies are all available on our website it's howardpianoindustries.com